And I think that's it. I think that's the crucial thing about this bike, actually. What they've done with the motor, with the battery and everything. It is a proper rider's bike. My name's Guy Kesteven, and I've been testing mountain bikes professionally for nearly 25 years. And today, I'm at Gisburn Forest Trails, testing the Radical Lapierre E-Zesty AM9 hybrid e-bike. There was a time when I literally used to dread getting Lapierres in on test. Not because they weren't good, in fact, the absolute opposite. Whatever they sent in was just seemingly bound to win any test. The combination of suspension, handling, chassis dynamics, they just had this magic ability to produce speed out of any situation. And it got to the point where other manufacturers just refused to send bikes. As always happens, times change, things move on. And also, recently, they've really been focusing on their power drain. And that is what I'm carving around Gisburn Forest Dung today. A Lapierre's new 2020 E-Zesty AM9. As you can see, it's an agile little devil. 65.5 degree head, 75 degree seat, 470 mil reach on this large, 440 mil bottom bracket height. So decent ground clearance when you're keeping the power on. And a really short and agile 435 mil chainstay length. Play it tips in, where it responds to put a knee in on the corner. I'll just flick your weight around. Just feels really intuitive and natural. And it's impressively low weight, just sub 20 kilos. But the big difference with this EZD has a completely removable Fizua Evasion 1 motor and battery pack system. So without that packing, 17 kilos. You know, heavier than a standard bike, but a dramatic saving. And it's perfectly usable without that motor. The trade-off is the battery's smaller, so it's 255 watt hours compared to a Bosch's 650. Levo's now up 700 on the pricier ones. So you've got less capacity and also max torque down to 400 watts. But it's certainly useful. And I've got it in the lowest breeze mode at the moment. That's what that green light means. Well named actually. Nice little gentle tailwind. And then hit blue to get it in river. And definitely getting more flow, more pull out of these turns here. But still very, very quiet. And you can barely tell whether you're actually on the motor or off it. And that's something I found when I tested the Fizua system on the Focus road bike as well. It's really, really seamless. You got a single click SRAM shifter, so you're not gonna dump too many gears at once and blow your chain. Having it wide open, with that 150 mil of travel and that super fluid rear suspension action. The shock driving back through those straddle stays. It is so easy to carry speed up these chunky sections like this. And this carbon frame is impressively poised and accurate. There's no sense of bagginess or sort of tram lining straight on. I deliberately bought the Zesty here today to Gisborne because it is this nudgery, rooty, chunky, tight and twitchy stuff all the way through. And 35 mil stem as standard on this large and that far 35 mil back end, really nice and agile. It's been absolutely belting through here, really alive. And this is the AM version, so you've got 150mm travel 
front rear, Fox style, DPS performance on the rear, 36 performance on the front. So the heavier duty 6000 series 36 chassis, which means it's a better steering, stiffer, stronger fork. And that means even though it's got the simpler grip damper control, it's really, really good. Especially with that bit of extra sprung to unsprung ratio in its favour. We've got 3C compound, right, 2.5 inch maxis, tyres, 35 mil rims, so tons of support and grip there. One thing I would say is it comes set up very much for kind of maximum comfort and plushy traction. So with both shock and fork fully open, you're going to blow through the travel pretty easily. And today what I've done, I've run in a low speed compression lever, half shot on the front and actually running it on pedal on the back just to give much better mid-stroke support and even with it propped up on low speed you're still getting a really nice sensitive flush high traction ride but you can lean it in carve it around a lot better so it is easy to work around but for longer term i probably put some volume spaces just so it naturally sits a bit higher in its stroke and because you've got that softer motor delivery it doesn't go off like a redneck girl in one of those motorbike fail videos. It actually squeezes the power out nice and smoothly. Bike stays balanced. Doesn't spin that big grippy rear tyre. And again, it's just really well balanced. Not like an audience to make this more nerve wracking than normal. The zero system is fairly expensive. All German made, so spec levels aren't crazy value, but you're getting a full carbon mainframe, very stiff, nicely engineered, good looking mainframe at that. Got good width bars, right length 35mm stem, it's certainly adequate for the job in hand in terms of suspension. Big guide RE brakes with 200mm rotors, and more than adequate. In terms of braking, there's the versatility of this bike that really sets it apart. The fact that it is genuinely a usefully powerful motorised bike, but also a legitimately rideable, not pedal compromised in any way, conventional bike. If you drop that Fazua pack out of there, there's actually a Fazua app which will give you full download on your battery health, how far you've got left, what power settings you're running, and even what wattage you've been putting out yourself. And when you consider you are getting an e-bike and a conventional bike in one package, then that value for money calculation becomes a lot more favourable. And again, that's another reason why I bought it to Gisborne, is because all this rock normally just knocks seven shades over your legs. If you're trying to carry speed over it, but with a bit of tailwind from that for Zua. <laughs> it's blasting along here. It really is, what? But then it's not so big and heavy like there when it comes to suddenly having to turn on short motors. Really manoeuvrable, that motor. And the weight genuinely not getting in the way. I was expecting to kind of use the higher power mode today. I've been really happy with it on this breeze mode and must have done about 20k now. I still haven't even got to halfway down those battery bars. And there's a nice little kind of overrun. So even if you have to stop pedaling, the motor still just drives a little bit further on. Just gets you over those crux moves nicely. But we won. You know, even rocket mode on this Fazua certainly isn't sat in five. So if you want absolutely crushing levels of e-bike grunt, then look at the Lapierre Overvolt bikes. But while it feels surprisingly agile and responsive, it still feels really planted and stable when you want it to. 
for the fun bit and as well as this AM9 spec as a EZSD Limited that saves nearly a kilo all told so you've got that close in twisty turny forestry agility and the potential of having a super smooth kind of comfort suspension set up but also if you put a bit of compression damping on board super stable when you're doing big fun features like oh, holy golly here at Gisborne and that performance look even with the low speed compression damping on there that's I think it's better than taking the bigger stuff with the low speed on there that bike really really controlled through there certainly not feeling afraid of pushing on even though I don't really ride it much I can't remember what goes on next <laughs> yes mate <laughs> quality riding thoroughly enjoy this uh, motorised velocipede off the front and I think that's it I think that's the crucial thing about this bike actually it is a proper rider's bike what they've done with the motor and with the battery and everything when you get involved with it you chuck it around and you put some power and drive into it yourself this gives you more of a trail experience it is a really really good involving riders bike <laughs> that route could have had me so anyway i'm running out of light now uh thank you very much for watching thanks for sharing this video and click for notifications if you want to hear more uh also consider joining my patreon channel where you can subscribe every month and get some more exclusive edits get some early stuff get some more in-depth analysis uh, this video has been sponsored by lapierre but as you'll hopefully realize it's fully open and frank discussion of the pros and cons of this bike like i say it's not going to be for everyone but i think for a few people it's going to be absolutely spot on uh thanks to mavic for kit Great. and thanks to endura for the mt500 splash trousers i'll be updating all those with individual reviews on my channel pretty damn quick and thanks to the gisborne trail volunteers for some absolutely cracking trails i'm guy kestivan this has been guy kez tv and you've been watching the Lapierre Ezesty AM9. Thanks very much.